<laughs> Hello and welcome everyone. I am Aurora Light and I'm really excited to be here today for the Evolve Summit with Candace McPherson, the founder of Joyous Therapies, who also happens to be an amazing spiritual connector and just a high vibrational being of magic and light that I really enjoy talking to and being around uh, kindred souls, loving the energies of sacred play for sure. So thank you so much for being here with me, Candace. Thank you, so excited to be here. <laughs> Oh my goodness. And you have been on this entrepreneurial journey um, over the past year or so, and you've been going through this personal evolution and a professional evolution. So I can't wait to get into that. You have been working with me one-on-one -on -one for a few months and catching a little bit of the Evolve program as well. And we are working towards you moving out of, um, of what you have been doing into something new. So you are actually taking time out of your day as you are a um, therapy assistant working with stroke survivors and people in rehabilitation programs right now. And you work with them and with physiotherapists, occupational therapists, recreational therapists, and speech therapists or pathologists helping infuse the healing and magic of laughter and joy and play into their rehab. So thank you so much for taking time from your day. <laughs> thank you. Um, yeah, it's, it's amazing. I love what you've been doing. I love what you've been doing. And I also love where you're going because you've been following that heart-centered, soul-driven need dare I say need to step on what you have been doing, even though it's so good and it's so profound and move into your own company work full time. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> it sounds so good. I say it all the time, but you know, just when you hear it, it just feels right. And it is right. So I'm so excited to share that today. Yeah. So can you tell us, since we're seeing you at the office, a little bit about what you are doing currently? Yeah, for sure. So for the last 10 years, I have been working right, um, with neuroclients and really having the opportunity to work in a variety of fields. So um, physio, occupational. So physio, we all kind of, that one's easier to know that the physical body, the endurance, the balance, uh, learning how to walk again, move again. And then occupational therapy is really like activities of daily living. So learning how to get dressed, how to cook, how to manage um, and plan your daily life and your activities, fine motor, gross motor, a lot of focus on the arm and hand and scanning and all those good stuff. Um, speech therapy is one that I wasn't trained for with school, but have um, just fell in love with over the last 10 years because communication is in my heart. And so learning how, like after a stroke, oftentimes um, people will know what they wanna say, they know what's going on. However, there's a disconnect in the brain and they're unable to always communicate that uh, through words. So we practice gestures, we practice um, body language, yes, no's, choices, uh, and finding strategies to support conversation where they succeed in getting their needs met, their voice heard. Um, and so that I'm really passionate and grateful that I've got to learn that skill over the last 10 years. And then of course, I've always had that play aspect part of my spirit. And neuro is so amazing because, uh, because it's different. Every It's not cookie cutter. It's very just uniquely each individual, no matter which country you're from, uh, what gender, your age, where the stroke is in your brain, we're going to come at it at a specific thing for that person. But the power of play has been so inspiring when I see 90-year-olds uh, play again, because to be faced it, they don't really remember, but that inner child comes out and we're able to play and work through and find their choices, find their passion, uh, find highlights where they can empower their health. And I think if they can do it, 
why can't we do it? So uh, I'm lucky enough to get inspired every day with their hard work and transforming their life and how the brain can repair and heal um, mm -hmm. when there's big damage and how how just finding new pathways and creating that new way of expression, we can relearn and regrow our brains. It's just fascinating to me. And I get to live it every day, which is a blessing. I love that. And I'm really curious. I know you bring the play and the magic and all of that, the possibility. But mm -hmm. was that something that you were also taught in school? Is that standard with re rehabilitation? Well, luckily for me, I my education did include recreational therapy. Uh, that isn't always standard in the diploma program. Um, however, it was my favorite part because it takes all of those therapeutic goals um, and makes it more functional and um, just gives that person power to choose their activities, to inspire, to reach their goals in a fun, meaningful, connected way. So I've always loved rec therapy and I feel like that fun was kind of instilled. It's not always recognized or valued to the same degree as maybe physio or speech or the more structural things. However, that is something that um, I'm educating and um, planting seeds in and helping uh, just show the possibilities of growth and, and engaging people, uh, allowing them to be the center and to blossom and grow and find a more holistic approach that allows that person and meets them where they're at and engages them in that transformation process. And so a lot of the disciplines that were originally resisted to the idea of laughter, <laughs> who laughs on purpose, um, and now they're starting to see the benefits and they're referring their clients to the program mm -hmm. because um, maybe they're too depressed to participate in therapy or they feel like they can't be heard or seen. And so once they learn some of those deep breathing techniques or those uh, sounds, so laughter sounds, singing, dancing, moving their body in a playful way that's not like, do this exercise 10 times where they feel engaged and feel empowered to get to know their body through movement and play in a different way than they've ever learned before. They're seeing it overflow into those other therapies and have huge success um, in all areas, not just one, but all areas of the program. So I'm really grateful to be that light to shine and see that we can still reach those same therapy goals, but from a new angle, a more holistic angle, because we're all little pretty diamonds of different shapes and uniqueness. Like this picture I'm looking at the background and I'm just like, yes, all my clients are these beautiful diamonds of different colors and different depths and clarity. And, and we just get to polish and make them shine and find them. So yeah, it's so much fun. <laughs> mm, I love that. And I mean, you're preaching to the choir here. I started a program, uh, my membership called the playground because <laughs> as an adult, I learned that the, the biggest value for me is to bring that energy of play into life for, for like every purpose, right? It's so holistically helpful, especially when we are needing to learn to grow, right? And when we are doing things in a super serious way, it can feel so heavy that it makes it hard. And, and I'm so glad that this is now commonly accepted in psychology and medicine, that when we can bring the fun, bring the laughter, when we can gamify things, we'll get it done. I mean, Mary Poppins said it like, you know, like 60, <laughs> 70 years ago, if you make the job a game, Right, it's gonna be easier to do, and so I I love 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 what you are doing right now, um, in your job. But you are planning on scaling back, as in therapy assistance, so that you can be present in joyous therapies and do the things that your heart and soul is calling you to do. Do you want to tell us a little bit about what it is that you are wanting to bring through with your business? Yeah, it's been a true evolution um, and journey and every step of the way is so meaningful and purposeful and I just give so much gratitude to my past 
through the challenges, the ups and the downs, um, learning new skills, acquiring new skills, getting inspired. And it's just leading me to the now. And I'm just so present right now and really feel grounded and rooted and excited um, that this next chapter is um, becoming into reality in an organic, natural way. So I've always kind of had this spark inside me of entrepreneurship. Anytime somebody spoke about opportunities of owning your own business, I always found myself feeling really drawn into that idea, whether it was a marketing level company or product, or maybe it was just a traveling or making it my own, like, I'm just going to assist people and travel the world and get paid for it. Like, I've always had this curiosity and spark to want to do that. However, a lot of my um, messaging surrounding those ideas haven't always been like green light. Green light has been like, whoa, you're a single mom. You know, you have a good job. You love your job. You're great at your job. Maybe you should just stay in your comfort zone and um, stay small. And, you know, some days I drank that Kool-Aid and believed that Kool-Aid to be small because it was fun. <laughs> I am good at it. It is comfortable. But I always felt in my heart that there's something greater that I'm being called to do. Mm -hmm. And and just like when I first started that career, I was new. I didn't know all the gifts they would provide for me. But I knew that I wanted to connect with people and help people and empower people's health. And so I've had the opportunity to acquire those skills and gain deeper understanding into those therapeutic goals. Um, and now in recent years through my own healing as we age, we get new aches and pains and pains just like a gift of awareness into maybe what's no longer serving. It's a reminder that maybe that's not where we need to be. And so without that pain, we don't realize without those challenges, we don't realize that there's a new way, an easier way, a flowing way. And um, that's kind of I've just been following my intuition and trusting in that and learning these skills. So um, for a while, like I was a single mom, I had two uh, young kids when I, I think they were one and two when I left uh, an unhealthy marriage and um, I was trying to pay daycare, work full time. Um, I didn't even have a plan. Like I wasn't gonna <laughs> keep anything else alive other than my children and myself, of course. Um, and I was in fight or flight mode for a long time. So very, uh, just my system was just go, 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 go. And although I do have a magical power of finding positivity and silver linings and gratitude, I just didn't realize that that sometimes can be a curse um, because you just keep going. And so the universe invited pain into my body uh, as my gift to slow down. So if I wasn't picking up on those universal clues, uh, guess I guess I trip over a carpet and break my toe and guess what I can't be on my feet for eight weeks and then I have to learn how to walk again so okay we're gonna have a car crash and have some chronic pain recovery and sometimes it can feel like a punishment like why me like I'm a good person <laughs> what's going on but then um, through the process of being able to find silver linings and coming back into myself, I was finding these gifts of time. So I got more time with my kids when I had to be off work. I, I got, I just have to work on the fine print, that clarity. I would like more time with my children without having a broken foot, <laughs> right? Like finding the wording. And so I've been growing in that aspect, but through those pains, I had to find ways i used to um do more physical exercise and dance little bursts of it on my lunch break to stay healthy i used to like doing artwork and to relieve stress and feed my creativity and my sacral area but with the accident i couldn't i couldn't do art i couldn't do even a squat i couldn't do exercise it took all my energy to show up to work and feed my children Quite often I'd be crying on the floor in pain, trying to give them any food. And it was just really, really hard. Um, and so I knew that there was more. Um, so I was curious instead of 
Like I have my moments of frustration, and but I know that there's more and there's answers. So I looked up laughter yoga. I heard about laughter therapy. I didn't know much about it. And as I was reading it, I thought, oh, wow, it's for all ages and all abilities. And it's gentle in your body. And it, it allows you to play and move through whatever abilities you currently have. So I was really drawn to that. And as I was reading all the health benefits, the physical health benefits, like endurance and helps with your blood pressure and your circulation, and then you have the balance, then the occupational therapy, like it helps with your crossing midline and brain. And so I was seeing all of these benefits from like my therapy training, as well as um, practicing them on myself. And I asked my boss, I advocated, I was like, hey, you need to, Send me to this workshop, pay for it, <laughs> and I will go and learn the skill and bring it back to our unit. And um, and yeah, I, I did hit some resistance, but I was I believed with my whole heart, and I wasn't even scared. And I just took that and ran with it, and it was so successful. And that motivated me. It inspired me. These clients that you know, had never heard the word meditation. They'd never heard the word positive affirmations before. We're like, like going, I am healthy. I feel strong. And they were screaming it. Like they, people hear us in the hall. And my boss tried to like come and dampen the fire and was like, you know, maybe you could just like, like whisper that or, or maybe they shouldn't say that they're healthy because you know, um, they're in a stroke unit. And I was like, I'm not telling anybody they can't say what they want to say. And maybe you should come to the class and learn about it. And, um, but they never did, but they, they didn't question my uh, methods anymore. And it was just so beautiful seeing the evolution within myself. I could relieve my stress. I could uh, use my creativity. I had way more energy. Like all of a sudden I would do it at the end of the day. I could feed my kids without crying on the floor. Mm -hmm. I could just things opened up and I was on that flow and I was loving it and teaching it and getting ready to leave my, I was going to leave my job and go to um, my own joyous therapies that I had envisioned that those therapeutic, meaningful programs or corporate, for daycare workers, for kids, for um, seniors. I love my seniors. Uh, for anybody, really, for moms. Um, and then COVID happened. And I took all that momentum and all that excitement and shut it down completely. I stopped working on my business. I stopped believing in my business. I stopped. I just again, got in that old pattern of fight or flight. I just have to survive. I, I was emotionally um, seeing the effects of COVID in the, like people's families weren't allowed in here. We were all masked up. We were all gobbled up. We, uh, everything was disconnected. And my whole life purpose is connection. So it was really, really tough on my soul. And my kids were fearful. My Clients were fearful. My staff member, my coworkers were fearful. I was fearful. And I didn't know what was mine and what was other people's. So I felt like all my panic buttons got pressed and my body shut down. And I physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually was at my lowest I've ever been in my whole life. Despite all the skills that I had, I was barely able to float. Um, I just kept popping back up, little spurts would pop back up. And then I would feel like I'd sink back down. And and that's when I um, got connected with Reiki and um, that more spiritual side that was within me, uh, my intuition, uh, that was always there. And I kind of knew and trusted because I did have that ability to manifest and create. Um, I just didn't really know what it was. <laughs> I didn't know. Um, how to connect with my spiritual team, how, like, the, I didn't know a lot of the terminology or anything like that. I just felt it more than anything. And it brought me home. And all of a sudden, I found layers within myself, my subconscious. I was kind of at, at different times. And then with my skills, I could then use, 
use the laughter, the breath, and the play to actively heal those things as they came up. But I knew what I was healing. And Reiki helped me bring those to the surface, into my conscious mind, to heal. And um, that just really transformed how I looked at it. And I realized why I couldn't, it wasn't the green light back when I thought it was. So that step back, that crash had purpose. I didn't receive all my gifts yet. I hadn't had that whole picture yet. So it wasn't time. Um, and since uh, connecting with my inner self, my highest self, and trusting in that, following that, I've now uh, bought myself a home for the girls and I. With the business space, I've been able to uh, teach people the lifelong gift of Reiki. I've been able to um, learn other forms of Reiki. I've been able to talk to my team with clear communication and confidence of what I'm hearing and knowing and feeling to be true. And I get to share that with others and not just tell people the answers that they want to hear, but hold space for them to discover it like I did, like in time, in that divine timing through play, playing with ourselves, playing with our thoughts, playing with our actions, our aligned actions. Look what happens when I follow that aligned action. Look what happens when I get in those old thought patterns and fearful, <laughs> you know, and instead of beating myself up about those, I decided to be curious by those and play with those. And just, it's kind of like Aurora does with her um, belief repatterning. I could choose this or I could choose this, but I can't do both at the same time. And I just love that because it's true. We always have choice. And I tell my clients that every day might not feel like you have choice but you can choose what color shirt to wear <laughs> it makes you feel good you can choose how to nourish your body you can choose sitting up tall versus slumped in your chair there's always something to choose and that's my favorite um, thing to share and teach <laughs> i love that and it's really empowering because i feel like choice is only a choice when we realize that we are a choice. So when we're bringing our conscious awareness to it, mm -hmm. otherwise people are uh, on autopilot very mm -hmm. much of the time as it almost um, from your story sounds like you had been in the past mm -hmm. until some things came into your fields that kind of brought you up into that more conscious awareness of the choices you were making and the path you were choosing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's been so neat to get that those awareness tools and, and to celebrate our choices. I love celebrating. <laughs> celebrate good times, come on. <laughs> and it just feels good to laugh, sing, dance, and celebrate our wins. Mm -hmm. Getting out of bed is a win, guys. It's not easy. These clients struggle to get out of bed. They struggle to put on a shirt. They struggle to hold a cup of coffee, my favorite card. <laughs> Everything can be taken away like that. Um, but even with those things comes other gifts, finds new ways to do something. So it's never a dead end. It's just a, a reroute. <laughs> yeah. So that's a really good um, place for me to ask this. And, and you did tell it in your journey about how this was like a journey back from pain to being able to celebrate and how much it supported you. But for somebody that is in the throes of challenges, of pain, of depression, who is like, I cannot possibly find something to celebrate. I cannot possibly find something to laugh about. How dare you? What would you say? Uh, play. Play with your face. Play with your posture. Sometimes when people are really flat, because after a stroke, sometimes it's very hard to to have expression or play. And I just little intermittent, just be curious. What does it feel like when I smile? What does it feel like when I honor that sad sadness? Because sadness is okay too. So like, I just want to honor that feeling right now and feel sad and be okay with being that sad. What, what changes in my energy, what changes in my body with those different expressions and noticing that it's okay to feel all of those things, but know that I can easily go from this mm -hmm. 
by choosing, right? So it it is different at first, and I know mere therapy or mere work isn't for everyone. However, it is a magic tool. So when I go to the shower, I just give myself a little love, like you're doing awesome, like keep up the good work, you're beautiful, um, you did good today. Even if I felt like I was just the worst mom because I was just yelling at my kids and, <laughs> and like I didn't get all my stuff done at work, I didn't even work on my business. Like you can always create these things that you didn't do, but I'm trying to give myself permission to just say you did awesome today and end on that really positive note. And it doesn't take much. You can just even a smile uplifts. Like when someone smiles at you. It, you feel it in your body and it gives you energy. So you can give yourself that same energy, especially for me. I don't have anyone there to like say something. It's just me at, once my kids are asleep. So I can do it for myself. I can choose to smile at myself and love myself first. And that always overflows into my kids. So I can always start to recognize like, okay, I'm being really reactive. I'm on autopilot. That just triggered me. And then I can just, notice that and fill myself up and it's not selfish it's not uh that's that's giving my kids the gift and when i don't i just like it's a learning opportunity to talk about you know communication and we don't always communicate how we want to <laughs> with ourselves or with others and so when we do that it's it's a time to just say yeah you know i i said it like this but now that I've thought about it, this is where I was coming from and this is what I wanted to say. So I, and it's been really impactful with the kids being able to, to watch them and, and watch them play. Like um, when they had a tough time with their sister or at school, a friend said something mean, what do they do? They come home, they grab their toys, whatever, if it's a block, a Lego, doll, whatever, monkey and, they act out that scenario and they're working through their emotions and feeling like they have control over that. They might not have felt in control at school when that originally happened, but they're playing with different scenarios on how they could have said it differently and, and got to put themselves in that, that role, the other person's role and their role, and they can choose how to respond. And kids just do it naturally until they're taught not to. We teach them not to. Right. And so now with all these studies coming out and all these um, like imaging and drumming and tapping and like all these more right brain activities uh, that are so powerful, um, we're now able to, to know more, be more, show more. And our kids, instead of unteaching them, they're teaching us and we're just all joining that play. Right. And that's the best part is just use your kids or use use yourself to play like go swing <laughs> go on a swing go for a walk splash throw rocks in and just uh play with your ideas and your movements and and it's fun it takes that stress off like sometimes i go into a corporate meeting everyone has low energy uh they're not engaged they're just you know by the time automatic and I have them stand up. I have them just say a ho, ha, he. <laughs> a few claps and taps, a few silliness. Um, and pretty soon they're laughing, they're dancing, they're brainstorming, they're, they're connecting on new levels. There's not that hierarchy or competition. It's a collaboration, it's teamwork. And, and they were vulnerable. Like when you laugh in public and it's not the norm, it's a vulnerability that we all can like draw into and when we show up with that vulnerable self and allow ourselves to be free to play magic happens and everyone adds to that just like kids one person okay i'm going to be a dog today and like okay well i'm going to be the queen and they just all pick their role and they might switch it up but they get to whatever they want why can't we do that at work why can't we say I'm great at this I'm gonna lead this you're great at that like, let's come together instead of like I want to win employee of the month and just leave everyone behind like draw on <laughs> each other create each other's strengths and 
and toot your own horn. It's not cocky. It's not arrogant. It's beautiful when you like own your amazingness. So I love that too. And I love that older people and younger people, once that filter <laughs> goes, they're so good at that. Mm. Like they've never I'm like the best soccer player in the whole wide world. Like <laughs> it's actually my superpower. And it's like their first time seeing a ball. Right? <laughs> like, but why not come in with that confidence? And guess what? That passion, that belief allows them to practice and practice and pretty much then they're in the Olympics doing <laughs> like soccer, right? So so never downplay where what you want. Just allow it to motivate you and stir you up and play with yourself. <laughs> I'm not judging with how you play. <laughs> I love it because it is, it's true. Everything you went in like all of the different facets and places that you can go with with play, with choice, with allowing ourselves to express creatively, come into the present moment, like play does all of those things as well as raising the vibrational frequency to the place of possibility, mm -hmm. right? And so I would love for you to share with us um, the, the plans that you have for Joyous Therapies. How, what is your intention? What is pulling you forward? It, you mentioned a bit about wanting to bring this into like schools and daycares and work with seniors. What do you? What is the goal that you're holding so we can all hold space for you to create this? I'm so excited that Joyous Therapies has so many avenues that it can take and offer, uh, and I have got the opportunity to play. Um, but there's always more opportunity to play and grow. And, I, and I'm definitely not limited just to one. Um, however, I am really called to, to serve groups and to be that connector. So I'm a spirit connector. I communicate with spirit and my spiritual team and other people's spiritual teams, as well as I activate that intuition. So you're all knowing, all believing, all feeling self. And I just hold space for you to um, to just look inwards for those answers. And I was having this conversation today with somebody and we talked about how a lot of times we say we don't know. And I'm guilty of that too. I don't know what I want. But remember when you're like picking, like as a kid, you do that little game and then you land on the one that you didn't actually want. So you keep going with the song because you do actually know. Or if you go to someone, what should I eat for dinner? And they say chicken and you wanted like a vegetable or something. When they say the one, you automatically, nope, I'm not going to listen to that. So it's nice to have sounding boards and connection. However, I do feel like um, we can learn to tune in first and not be so um, drawn to other people's perceptions or opinions and just trust in ourselves more and then attract what we what we want. So group is magic. I, I want to teach people these therapeutic tools. So laughter, breath, movement, affirmations, and play. <laughs> and with their goal. So I don't like to choose the goal. I feel like that's important for that group. So if the group is wanting more productivity in business and or if they're wanting tools to help with their kids um, to build resilience um, and to help with mental health, or if it's seniors recovering from a stroke, I just want the goal. And then I can create laughter, breathing, meditations, and affirmations. And however, I'm creating, but we're co-creating. So again, it's that collaboration and I'm holding space for them to look inwards. So it's not, okay, tell me what my spiritual family wants me to do. And I want all the answers to my ancestral past and healing. We can work through that. It's a journey. And sometimes we do need to go to those subconscious levels of healing and removing those blocks and, and tapping in and looking back um, to get to that next level. However, there's things that you can do in the now daily that we can choose and play and once we build the confidence in those then that 
inner healing comes easier. It's not as scary. It's not as like, whoa, what did I just open that I don't have any skills to deal with? Because energy, I've learned <laughs> healing is difficult and it brings up emotions that we might not be prepared for. So if I just put people in that situation without giving them skills, it can be overwhelming. So I want to teach people the skills so that as we're going in that deeper healing, they feel empowered to choose their breath, to choose movement, to choose their emotions, to play with their emotions and release them. And then of course, like believe for fun, replace them with more empowering, meaningful ways of being. So yeah, definitely group programs, uh, in-person, live connection in a group format is Goodbye, COVID. <laughs> we need connection, whether it's on Zoom, whether I've learned with energy, there are no boundaries there. Uh, so that was a nice um, belief that I, I came to through COVID. I didn't have that belief system a year ago. <laughs> um, so it's nice to have the opportunity to work, meet them where they're at. I do do some one-on-one -on -one and I do Reiki treatments on people. However, I feel um, that would just evolve naturally and group is my true passion. Going into your space, creating together and teaching you to continue on that healing journey yourself. I love it. I love all of the different forms of facilitation myself too. And it's been a long time since we've been able to do a lot of groups. So I can't wait for that to open up. Yeah. And so Candice, if people are like, I need some more of this joyousness in my life, what is the best way for them to connect with you and find out what you're up to? Well, my favorite way, uh, if I'm calling on my heart and calling on your heart is to um, connect in a conversation over phone or video chat. Uh, I really, or even in person, let's go for a walk. Uh, I really like to connect with the person and, and feel into each other's energy and see if it's aligned and serving on both parts. So I do welcome connect calls. Uh, I do have a website that uh, has surface level information that is pretty and might spark some curiosity from within because joyous therapies is so diverse in its offerings um, between the spiritual aspects the laughter aspects that it's it's hard to list them all and so that's why i would love like email or message me on uh, message facebook is probably my uh, most confident form of tool i do i am on instagram as well However, Facebook Messenger, we can do a video chat or we can um, get to know each other a little bit more and see what your goals are. And so I can uh, let you know which area of the program might be most aligned for you in the now. <laughs> and there's always more that we can go with, but I want to meet you where you are now and hold space for that and just watch you grow and blossom into those pretty diamonds that we were talking about earlier. <laughs> All those are diamonds and have gifts. So. Mm. Also, kids, if you have like a group and you want to do it, I can come and facilitate a group for you. So it's really nice that way. If people are holding retreats, I'm retreat ready. I can come and hold that space and add value to your retreat on multiple levels, depending on what your retreat needs. <laughs> that sounds like so much fun. Thank you so much for sharing your passion and your joy and your light and your magic with us and reminding us all about the power of choice and the power of sacred play to uplift and invigorate and do all of the magical things that we know it does. So as we're closing out, because I know you have to get back to work here because you've got the <laughs> rest of your work day. Is there anything else that's on your heart that you want to share with people? I just want to say thanks for joining us and thanks Aurora for having me. Uh, this is such a beautiful community that I'm so grateful to be connected with and inspired by all the other amazing speakers. This mm -hmm last few days have just been so amazing. Thank you for being vulnerable and sharing your journeys. And I can't wait to see other beautiful souls that align with Aurora or, or any of the speakers this weekend. And 
they'll be speaking next because it's not just one, it's all of us can have the same magic and we all do have the same magic. So come play with us in the playground or anywhere, connect with me. Can't wait to meet more beautiful faces. So thank you. Mm. Beautiful, thank you so much. I'll be sure to leave Candace's um, contact information in the comments and the show notes if you're watching this on YouTube. Be sure to like and subscribe to find all of the amazing conversations that I have with magical beings like Candace, like all the people I've spoken with this week. And I'm really excited for the conversation that I'll be having live in two hours with Stephanie Aurora of Toastography, who is a fantasy boudoir photographer and she creates these opportunities for people not just women but people to really dive into expressing their creative essence and letting it be captured in a way that makes you feel incredible i have done this and uh, i'm just getting some photos it's magic so uh, you can tune in at 2 p.m mountain time to speak with uh, stephanie and i Sending you all so much love. Thank you. Have a beautiful rest of your day. And we'll connect soon. Bye.